All right, in this segment, we're going to be looking uh, beyond just sort of standard Mendelian uh, inheritance. Now, uh, the first uh, topic that we're going to look at uh, is related to uh, Mendelian inheritance. Uh, now, typically, the phrase complete dominance is uh, reserved to explain uh, my play on the basketball court. Uh, but in relation to genetics, uh, what we mean by that is that uh, both the homozygous dominant genotype and the heterozygous uh, genotype produce the dominant trait. So, uh, in essence, <coughs> individuals even having just one allele uh, produce enough of a protein product to uh, affect or produce the uh, dominant uh, phenotype. So, they produce enough uh, protein uh, to create. dominant trait. Now, uh, in the case of incomplete dominance, it might be easiest to uh, think about an in-between phenotype. That's uh, an easy way to remember this. So just think in-between uh, phenotype. So in this instance, uh, the heterozygote is going to produce some product. Now, uh, the case they give, or the example they give in the book are uh, snapdragons. If you are homozygous dominant, uh, you produce large quantities of this red pigment, uh, the flower appears red. If you are homozygous recessive, they produce none of the pigment and appear white. Now heterozygous individuals are going to produce some of the pigment and uh, in, in that uh, production of uh, an in-between amount of pigment they end up creating uh, a phenotype that is also um, considered sort of in-between uh, so they'll appear pink in color. So just think incomplete is in-between. Right now in the case of codominance both alleles uh, are being expressed, uh, so both protein products are being made. Um, what you could say for that is both alleles influence phenotype. Oops. So, um, the book uh, gives the example of the M and N molecules on the red blood cells. So, uh, individuals who are homozygous for the M uh, have red blood cells, or for the M molecule, sorry, have red blood cells that have the M molecule on the surface of the cells. Those who are heterozygous, so they have an M gene and an N gene, produce red blood cells that have both M molecules and N molecules on the uh, cell or plasma membrane surface. And uh, those cells that have 
two N molecules, or two N genes, I should say, produce red blood cells that oops, produce red blood cells that, uh, I'm sorry, the pen is freezing. I'm really sorry that Moby's acting up so much. Um, this is the last video segment, so I apologize. Or the last video segment to be produced, I should say. So I apologize for any difficulties we have here. So just the end molecule uh, is created. Now, uh, another uh, category of non-Mendelian inheritance is uh, the case of multiple alleles. Now, in the case of multiple alleles, you have many different possibilities uh, for a particular character. So, many alleles are possible. Now, that said, an individual is only going to possess uh, two particular copies uh, at a time. So, do keep that in mind with multiple alleles. Although there are many possibilities in the gene pool, or within the population, an individual will only have two copies at a time. Now, an example of this uh, would be the ABO blood groups. Now, there are three alleles, A allele, B allele, and O allele. What's fascinating about them is that um, the A and B alleles are codominant, while the O allele uh, is recessive. So let's look at um, how to uh, figure this out. So we know the phenotype. From that, um, we can look at possible genotypes. And uh, taking a look at this, um, we can then look at the surfaces of the red blood cells and how they would appear. Now, type A blood, uh, type A would be the phenotype. Genetic combinations to produce type A blood would be I superscript A, I superscript A, or since the O allele is recessive, we can re represent that with a little i. Now, individuals with these red blood cells would have, uh, we could look at it as the A protein, so we'll make the A protein there. Uh, type B blood has individuals that possess uh, only the B allele or possess the B allele and an O allele. Now, those red blood cells will have different protein markers on the outside. They'll have type B markers. Uh, third case would be individuals who have type AB blood. And if an individual has type AB B blood, you automatically know that person's uh, genotype. That person must have an A allele and must have uh, a B allele. So, looking at uh, that particular instance, they will possess both uh, proteins associated with the A gene and proteins associated with the B gene. The final instance uh, or the final category would be type O blood. Again, if a person has type O blood, you automatically know the person's genotype. They must have two recessive alleles. And if that happens, you don't produce any proteins for the surface uh, related to this ABO blood group. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, questions related to this, you can uh, look at, uh, say, a woman that has uh, type A blood. So if we have a woman with type A blood, oh, um, a woman with type A blood, and a man with type B blood, would it be possible for them to have a child with type O blood? That's the question. Well, that is possible if the woman and man are both heterozygous uh, for their particular uh, blood type. Uh, that being the case, uh, both the man and the woman could pass on the O allele in their offspring and have offspring of type O blood. And again, these are the types of problems you'll need to work out on um, the test.